Hi everyone, today we're going to be getting started with RAD Map, part of the Telerik RAD Controls for Silverlight and RAD Controls for WPF Control Suites for .NET XAML development. In today's video, first we're going to see what it takes to add a brand new RAD Map to your XAML project, and then we're going to take a look at choosing a provider, going through two of the providers that we have available, but also mentioning the others that you may want to use in your RAD Map application. Finally, we'll take a quick look at the runtime experience, just so you can see exactly what it looks like utilizing RAD Map in your Silverlight or WPF application. We're going to start in Visual Studio today, so we'll take the Telerik Visual Studio Extensions menu, choose RAD Controls for Silverlight, and say Brand New Silverlight Project. On the New Project screen, we'll make sure Telerik and Silverlight is selected. We want to do a C-sharp RAD Control Silverlight application. We can call this radmap.gettingstarted. Click OK. In the new Silverlight application window, we don't want to change anything here, so we'll go ahead once again and click OK. And from the Project Configuration Wizard, I'm going to pick Data Visualization, and that's all we'll need. It'll handle the rest for us and click Finish. And now Visual Studio is going to do the rest of the loading and setting up the references that we need in our project. So we can just wait for that to get started, and then we'll be able to continue with adding RADMAP to our project. Now that Visual Studio is all loaded up, we can see we've added Telerik Windows Controls, Controls Data Visualization, and Telerik Windows Data for our project. So that's everything we're going to need to get started with a RADMAP instance. And I'm going to go ahead and give us a little bit more room in the XAML Designer. As you can see, we already have the Telerik namespace all set for us here. So we can go ahead and say Telerik RADMAP and give it a name, X RADMAP. And we now technically have a RADMAP instance sitting in our project. If you go ahead and scroll down, you can see where some of the different items are, latitude and longitude, the scale that we're looking at, as, as well as this handy bar that handles the zooming, the view mode, and all those other useful features that you have when navigating RADMAP. Now, of course, if we just ran this right now, we'd have all this stuff sitting here at the bottom, but no actual view on what RADMAP will be displaying, no provider. So for that, we're going to go ahead and say Telerik RADMAP.provider. And as you can see, we actually have a number of providers here available. So Bing Maps, Bing Maps with traffic, the empty provider, so if you're doing different kind of shapefile imports or if you want to do some custom work like we do on our hotel or stadium examples, the OpenStreetMap provider, as well as the URI image provider and a WMS tile provider. For this example, we want to first look at the OpenStreetMap provider. I'll just close this up. And we're immediately going to see that we now have some data loading. If I go ahead and F5 to run this, we can immediately step in and start utilizing RADMAP with OpenStreetMap provider. As you can see in Internet Explorer, our OpenStreetMap has loaded. So we're going to go ahead and start zooming in, and get some labels in more detail as the different map layers load into place. And now we can go zooming in farther and farther and farther to right around where I'm recording this video. And we can see all the details coming in. We can go ahead and play with our different zoom levels. We can skip around the map, or we can even hide this display altogether. So we can view the stuff that would be under it a little bit better. And we have all that map navigation, all that good stuff going on. And of course, this is the free map provider. So we get in pretty close with the information, but we don't have all the services and everything that would be available from something like Bing. So let's see what it takes to go ahead and get a Bing map set up. Back in the XAML here, where we set our provider in the XAML, we'll go ahead and just delete that altogether. Do a quick save and F7 to step into our code. We're also going to head into app XAML, CS, you see here, and make a public key. So public static string key equals. And here I'm going to put my Bing Maps key. Now, in the copy that you're going to get of this, I'm not actually going to put my Bing Maps key, but I'll give you the link to the documentation file that shows you where to get this, just so you know where to get your own if you want to play around with Bing Maps. But otherwise, I'm going to paste this in here in a deleted portion of the video so that I can utilize my Bing Map account to showcase Bing Maps in this video. Now I've added my Bing Map key, so that's all done and taken care of. And on the loaded event, we're going to create a brand new Bing Map provider. Quick Alt F10, get that all set namespace wise. We'll call it Bing Map equals new Bing Map Provider. And I don't want to use the default or the first. I'm going to say map mode dot aerial. Label visible, we will say true. And application ID will be app dot key. And now all I have to do is say x radmap dot provider equals Bing Map. And now I go ahead and run this, and we're going to see the Bing Maps in action. Now you can see Bing Maps is loaded in. It's a slightly more detailed version than we saw with OpenStreetMaps, but we'll zoom into the same general area, the greater Boston metro area where I am right now. 
and we can see a whole lot more detail. And we also have the option if we want to go to road view. So again, this is a little bit closer to what OpenStreetMap was showing, but we also have that nice aerial view. So it's very easy to utilize both of these as well as navigate the UI. You can see the latitude and longitude are constantly updating. We always have an idea of what the scale that we're displaying is. And you have the option to do a quick zoom out or a quick switch between views. All out of the box and just that easy to set up utilizing RadMap. So if you've seen how easy it is to get started with RadMap, be sure to check out more videos in this series to take advantage of the other features and functionality that RadMap have to offer.